In this episode, I'll give you a crash course on the file system hierarchy standard. The file system hierarchy standard gives a great overview of what a Unix-like file system should look like. For example, what directory should exist and what their contents should be. Although you're probably not going to read the file system hierarchy standard end to end, it can be a great reference, and once you understand it, it'll help us predict the various locations of files and directories. Even though this standard is maintained by the Linux Foundation, many Linux distributions will have their own take on how this is implemented. Let's jump over to the Wikipedia page for the file system hierarchy standard, where there is a great summary of what the root file system should look like. I have included links to these documents in the episode notes below. Let's take a look at the directory structure heading. Here we'll find a listing of the directories under our root directory slash. I recommend downloading VirtualBox and installing Ubuntu or CentOS so that you can play around and explore these systems. Let's quickly review these directories one by one, starting with the slash bin directory. It holds commands used by both sysadmins and normal users. You will find many common commands used for getting around located here. Next we have the slash boot directory. This holds everything you need to boot the system. Things like your Linux kernel, the initial RAM disk, and even bits of the bootloader. Slash dev is where all of our devices are stored. Things like the hard disks, keyboard, mice, all those types of things. On some systems, this will be a virtual file system that is created on boot after detecting the devices attached to your system. This next one is where you will likely spend quite a bit of time, slash etc or as I like to call it, slash Etsy. This is where almost all of your system configuration will live. This stores your system-wide configuration files for things like setting the system host name, networking config, all of the configuration files for the services you plan to provide, things like HTTPD and MySQL. You will also find the file system mounts defined here along with the password and groups files. As you might guess, this is a very important directory. I could spend the entire episode talking about it, but let's move on. Let's just scroll down a little bit here. Next we have the slash home directory. This is typically the default location where users' home directories are stored. Next we have slash lib, and possibly slash lib64, if you have a 64-bit machine. These directories will store shared libraries for your system. These next couple of directories will typically hold the file system mounts for removable media. For example, say a USB stick or something like that. If you install external packages from source, you might put them in slash opt. Say for example if they don't integrate well with the rest of your system. This is kind of a toss up and generally up to your personal discretion. Next we have the virtual file system called slash proc. You can explore and change many aspects of the running kernel. For example, changing network settings on the fly or reviewing running process information. Things like memory consumption. Next we have slash root. This is root's home directory. Then there is the slash sbin directory. This is very similar to slash bin in that it holds essential commands. But sbin is special in that it typically holds sysadmin type things. For example, commands for formatting the disks, changing network settings, or rebooting the system. Then there is the slash SRV directory. You might host content here, which you can serve up over the network. Say for example, a Git repository, some NFS mounts, or even web content. Slash temp is where you can store temporary files. The operating system will also store things in here too. There will probably be processes running in the background on your system which will prune older files. So do not store anything in here which you really need access to, hence the temporary name. Slash user and below is where the majority of your user land applications and utilities will live. Things like your MySQL server or HTTPD binaries will be stored in this directory structure. Let's just scroll down a little bit more here. Next we have slash var. This is where much of the state information lives. Things like log files, mail spools, databases used by the system, and process log files. I know this seems like a lot of material to remember. So to reinforce this, I recommend downloading VirtualBox and installing Ubuntu or CentOS so that you can play around and explore these systems. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list.
You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.